Hey, hey, Tanner James, DJ, TJ, we are back with the Peak Period Podcast. This week, we have the awesome DJ Rick Webb. Yes, DJ Rick Webb. He is the big YouTuber, does all the gig logs, the gig vlogs, the the product reviews. He has a ton of tips. He's on YouTube, so make sure you check him out. And uh, we're going to get right into this podcast because there is a ton of awesome content. Make sure you listen all the way till the end because a lot of the good content also does come at the end. So we are going to get right into it and I will catch you on the other side. All right, here we go. We are here with DJ Rick Webb. Thank you for joining on today, Rick. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if you guys don't know Rick, he is big on YouTube. Would, Would you call yourself a YouTube celebrity? No. (laughs) <laughs> I, I think you're pretty close, though. I think you're pretty close. For, in the DJ world, yes. In the DJ world of YouTube, yes. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So um, he does a lot of YouTube videos. He does a lot of gig logs. He does a lot of um, product reviews. A lot of um, uh, info videos for DJs, giving tips, pro tips, tutorials. right? Tutorials um, and wants DJs to become better. And I think that's mm-hmm. kind of that's the whole goal of this whole podcast and this whole thing is I want to i think the best way i can i can describe it is say like i'm trying to change the negative stereotype associated with djs right i mean it, it's there and i think it's if we there. can take that away it'll help everyone you know it'll help everyone become better and do better um mm-hmm. make more money have better events have the respect be there from clients that kind of thing so um, paid what we're supposed to be paid. right 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 so uh, we're going to talk about multi-ops because um, Rick is moving into one right now. But I think what would be good is if we went back a little bit, talk about how you got started um, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So you have a lot of experience um, working in a multi-op, right? I have three years now of working in a multi-op and then prior to that working on my own. Mm-hmm. So. so how many years ago did you start, complete start DJing? So the first time I ever picked up like a... DJ programmer of any sort and started doing gig was like seven years ago. Uh-huh. It was like my eighth grade year in middle school. Uh-huh. And then uh, professionally moved into doing weddings and like school dances around 2012, I believe is mm-hmm. what I say. Yeah, 2012 okay. is when I went full professional and then moved into the multi op in 2015. So you did a few years before, you kind of got the basics down, you started learning, you got into DJ Associates, right? Mm hmm the the yep. multi-op and then you've just been doing a lot of stuff and then you 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 have done stuff on the side as well right yeah so i'm it's a very loose i'm the dj associates is a family-owned family uh-huh. based multi-op and they're very friendly and uh, they treat me like family so uh-huh. um, i'm allowed to do some stuff on my own as well as working for them mm-hmm. my only stipulation in the contract is that any and every wedding has to go through them okay so I can do little side charity events and uh-huh. school dances on my own, but okay, cool. I have to do weddings for them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good, um, pretty good deal though, right? Because yeah. then you get all the you get weddings from them, and that mm-hmm. can be pretty hard to get when you're starting out, right? Yes. Um, okay, so how many events have you done with them? Do you think over the what three years that you've worked with them? A lot. Easily over 50. Uh-huh. It's got to be over 50, maybe uh-huh. over 100. I don't know. I've done up to this point. I think I started adding up the one day. It was. I've done in my career over 500 events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now. that's awesome. So, That's a pretty big milestone. Yeah. And that's counting everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think wedding-wise, I was over just over 150 weddings. Mm-hmm. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So over the few years, you've learned a lot about the multi-op and you learned a lot about how to actually kind of run it, what the best techniques are, how do you mm-hmm. find good people, you know, that kind of thing, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely been looking at that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Especially move forward into my own. Right, right. So you graduated college. You had to move. Not yet. Not yet. You're about to. I, gra- I graduate in May of this year. So. Okay. You're about I've to. Already, I've already got like the full time job is already established down uh-huh. in North Carolina. I'm in Ohio. I don't know if we mentioned okay. that. Okay. And uh, so moving down there, have to ditch DJ Associates basically mm-hmm. because we don't travel down that far. Mm-hmm. So 
I got to start my own venture, basically, if I want to continue DJing. Uh-huh. So you're going to start your own um, business, mm-hmm. your own multi-op? Yep. And you've already found people, right? Uh, well, one of them is up here. He's he's going to graduate, I think, two years after I do. But mm-hmm. um, we've worked it out so that he's going to come down and uh, do gigs to help me get going. But uh-huh. uh, also for YouTube, I had three or four people reach out to me and say, uh-huh. hey, you're starting. I'm around this area. Uh-huh. That's and awesome. How can I join? Yeah. <laughs> Let me get through year one, right. and then maybe I'll start adding. Right, to right, sure. right, right, right. That's pretty cool, though. That's cool that you have the connections like that. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So, for somebody that doesn't know, would you like to explain the differences between being a single guy, being a single op, doing your own thing, being completely on your own, versus mm-hmm. a multi op? So, the biggest number one thing you're going to have is when you're working for a multi op. You don't have to worry about promoting, advertisements, booking. My multi-op I work with, and some vary on how this all works, but mine is basically I will get a call that says, hey, I got a bride and groom for this date. Mm -hmm. Can you do it? I just say yes because they have my calendar. And then they, my our booking agent lady, um, it's a guy now that switched over, but uh, she'll contact me about a month but prior to the wedding, I'd be like, hey, I got the bride and groom. They want to come meet with you, discuss all the details mm-hmm. of the wedding. When are you available? And then I just travel down to our headquarters where mm-hmm. we got offices and stuff, meet with them, handle all that. And actually, I've done weddings where I don't even meet with them. I just show up at the wedding with mm-hmm. my timeline and everything good to go. Single up, you got to handle everything from advertising, trying to book them, sending them pricing, mm-hmm. all that detail. Our booking lady is like a actual business person. She can handle a business mm-hmm. pitch and uh sell them on she does the sales yeah she does the sales all you gotta worry about is being a performer Mm -hmm. going out and doing your thing which is nice that's probably the number one biggest thing uh uh, another thing from that is you got the benefits of the big corporation Mm -hmm. or big company with all the equipment Mm -hmm. the music all my music came from them for Mm -hmm. the three years i worked with them and which was nice Mm -hmm. i didn't have to pay that 50 bucks a month right for a pool so Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of experience. They would have more experience yes. than you, so they can tell you what the best thing to do or, you know, any advice or, hey, this happened at this wedding. You know, what do you think would be a good way to combat that for the next one? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that kind of thing. So so usually when you start out, you either start out as a single up completely on your own and you kind of have to figure it out. Or when you start out, you end up working with a multi-op and mm-hmm. you are... Um, exactly what you just said you're working with them under them yeah. for them um they bring the events to you you start doing it and i think that's the best way to do it i started as a single i never really worked with a multi-op um and i think if i would have if i could go back i would have worked with a multi-op because i think it mm-hmm. gives so much um value you know the the main the main thing about it is you don't make as much right mm-hmm. and and it and it's really if you think about it it's logical because they're doing all the advertising they're doing all the most of the contact between the bride and the groom or the clients and you they are out there um doing kind of all the hard work you just come in and perform you may have a few contacts with the client beforehand but you just come and do your thing and you're good to go so that's really good when you're starting out because you just get a ton of experience and like you said they have a bunch of gear so then like that's really nice for you for a few reasons. One, you get to test out all this gear. Two, if you need gear, it's... Do, do they charge you it's there. to rent it? Uh, it's a family base, so no, they don't no. charge for it. Yeah, they'll, so... They'll upcharge the client. I'll mm-hmm. still get paid the same, but I just go out and use equipment. Yeah. So then, you know, you don't have to worry about renting gear and mm-hmm. that kind of thing and going to Guitar Center or going to a rental house and, and renting it for this. You know, they, they cover that. Which one little side note for yeah. my area... There are no rental houses <laughs> uh-huh. anywhere. The nearest rental house to me is 45 minutes away. Man. It's terrible. That's bad. So, so it is really good for in, you that you have this. We're in r- rural, Ohio, rural Ohio. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. We have that. So yeah. Having that connection is great, especially when you get into doing bigger school dances uh-huh. like we started doing over the past two years. Now. Right. Right. So so it it's, I think if I could do it again, that's what I would do. I would want to learn from somebody instead of making the mistakes on my own and learning it the hard way. So one of the weird things with me, I never wanted to go into the, the multi-op. Mm-hmm. They actually asked me. Uh-huh. So I'm 
this is some a topic I'm planning on making a video on, but I actually when I started DJing in eighth grade, mm -hmm. I also was working for the largest catering company in my area. Okay. My neighbor actually was the head of it. And so I was going out, they do three to five weddings every weekend. Mm -hmm. I was going out every weekend seeing DJs that were DJing these weddings and stuff. So that's how I was kind of learning. Mm -hmm. I was observing what the DJs were doing at the yeah. weddings. And uh, it happened to be when I went to college, when I went to college, it took, it was a lot of stress. A mm -hmm. lot of stuff was happening. And I also started YouTube about the same time. And uh, Chris from DJ Associates asked me, he's like, hey, I'm turning down three weddings almost every week right now. Uh -huh. I need more DJs. I've seen you. You're really good. You want to come join? So and I joined on and it actually took it helped my, me out a lot for being able to relax, not worry about my advertising and everything mm -hmm. like that, focus on my schoolwork. So just worked out really well in the point in my life when mm -hmm. it happened. But so as a multi prior to that I didn't prior to that I didn't think about actually being in a yeah. part of it. Yeah. As a multi op, you say you book four events and sometimes the owner will still be a DJ who is still working. So they may have three other DJs or they may have four DJs and they send out all the DJs and the owner is just kind of like a businessman, a manager, um, connects mm -hmm. everybody. It kind of depends on that person and that business and that kind of thing. But they will um, send out the person, they book the event, they send out a separate DJ, that DJ goes out, does the event, they pay that DJ um, and then the, the owner takes a fee kind of as like a, a booking fee. And it depends on a lot of different things. It's not like standard. It's not like a hundred dollar standard fee. It, it really can depend on so many different factors. Um, mm -hmm. And so they take a little bit of money and then, you know, yeah, if, if you don't have any gear, they're going to take more money generally yeah. than if you have all your own gear. So it kind of depends, but they take a fee and then they take out like the fees for the advertising and the booking. And so then after that, you get however much they decide to pay you. And so that's kind of, I don't want to say a downside because it's not really a downside. There, there's so much upside to it, but that is mm -hmm. the trade-off that you're giving. Yeah, you don't have to pay for advertising. Yeah, you don't have to pay for marketing. Yeah, you don't have to pay for um, all this extra stuff, the the coordination with the client, but you aren't getting paid the full amount, right? Yeah, and that's, you're not getting paid the full amount. And that's one thing I, I noticed from a couple multi-ops. I would, if you're looking at a multi-op and they don't tell you how much they are getting from the gig, Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't like to stay with that client or mm -hmm. with that multi op just because they're not being completely honest with uh -huh. you if you're working for them. Like DJ Associates tells me straight up the board, this is how much mm -hmm. the, we we this is how much we made for it. This is how much we're taking, mm -hmm. and this is how much you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. Because I I know from talking with I don't know if you know S Love Entertainment. Uh huh. Yeah. Doug over there. Yeah. There's a a big one over there with Clock Entertainment or whatever, something like that, and he's. He said that the DJs get paid four hundred dollars regardless of how much they charge. the The company will legit charge the same wedding a thousand dollars and three thousand uh -huh. dollars. Same wedding, same package, same everything. The DJ gets paid the same regardless. Mm -hmm. and it's just uh, that I don't see that being fair for the right, DJ. They're right, they're right. upcharging more for the same thing. Uh huh. And I think that's kind of why over a long period of time you move out of working with multi-ops because yeah. the money isn't necessarily there they don't because they're taking a fee on off the top and you know all djs complain about that we don't make enough and then they're taking a fee off the top and so it's kind of like you know you're not getting paid a lot now again the upside is huge if you don't want to be a businessman and you don't want to go out and learn advertising and marketing and all this extra stuff then yeah, it's great for you, right? You just get to go out, DJ, you're good to go. But if you want to do it as a and make money and make income, and th that will be hard for you to do and make a lot of money being yeah. a worker in a multi-op. Yeah, but, I mean, that's not said across all multi-ops. I mean, DJ Associates, I was able to move up. Mm -hmm. I was able to start charging more and more. Right. Every year, I think I increased my price by about $100, $200. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the point now where I'm not doing as many gigs, but I'm making about the same amount mm -hmm. of money I did just doing less gigs. And then also, I got people like Chris that came to me and he's like, you know, these school dances, I don't want to do them anymore. Mm -hmm. Tyler doesn't want to do them anymore. If you want to do it, I'll let you have pretty mm -hmm. much all the profit from it. You go out, you market it and everything. So I took over DJ Associates role last year in marketing and booking school dances. Mm -hmm. 
So I marketed, I booked them all, mm -hmm. and I booked first year doing it, I booked five proms, and then homecomings was kind of rough. I because a lot of them had the same date, which mm -hmm. sucked because we only right. had like two school DJs. Uh -huh. You could only do three. Right, right, right. But proms, we, proms. I think we already got ten schools contact us Dang. back because they want us back. Uh -huh. so. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I mean every multi op's a little bit different. They're not yeah. all the same. Um, and some do pay pretty well and it's not bad, yeah. but you have to find that, you know, um, you have to go out and look at the you different ones and kind of see what's going on and, and if they even want you to work with them, you know, maybe, yeah. and maybe you don't want to work with them. Maybe they only do weddings and you're, I want to do school dances. Well then don't join that multi-off, right? So kind of do your research and, and figure it out. So on that note, the, the upside of being an owner of a multi-op is you make money not doing anything for the most part i mean you're doing the coordination but you're not out there djing you're not out there doing this and kind of going back to what we talked about with the money it depends on how much you take but you can take i, I mean i it depends a few hundred five hundred bucks i mean it depends on many different things a hundred two hundred mm -hmm. five hundred um off the top and you just kind of make that money yeah. and yeah. somebody else goes out and does the work Go ahead. Well, I mean, we got we got a lot of back end stuff we got to pay for. Right. Especially if you're someone like DJ Associates, right. where we own two giant warehouses and a uh -huh. office space. Right. <laughs> currently, right now. Right. So, but we so, also do concerts. So. That's the other. Yeah, that's the other side. <laughs> it costs a lot of money. Yeah, you make a lot of passive income. Oh, yeah. yeah, the money comes in. Right. Yeah, the money is flowing in, and you don't have to go out and work. But you have two main things. I think one is the cost of equipment right? There's a lot of money that goes into it. And to book more events, you have a lot of um, advertising expenses and money that you have to make sure that you're good mm -hmm. on. And the second thing is the liability of having yeah, other people sure. represent your business. And yeah, it's huge. That's huge. and it's not like a subway, where if you get somebody bad, and they piss off a client, whatever, it, it's subway, you know, it's not like that. This is like, you know, people are dealing with p other people's weddings day, wedding days, right? I mean, this is not just like mm -hmm. any kind of, oh, it doesn't matter. You can just hire whoever and figure it out. This is a little bit bigger, a lot bigger. So yes. you can't just kind of take it easy. You got to make sure your people are on it, you know? So yeah. yeah, you do make some passive income. The downsides are it costs a lot of money and you have the liability. I've, I've heard some horror stories from multi-operators uh -huh. of, the, this one DJ went out, did this one thing, and then a review got posted on their website that they didn't see for like three months. Uh -huh. And it was like a very, very, very negative review oh, that no. ended up getting to get fired. But just it's some of the research I've been doing and uh -huh. stuff that you need to stay up on. One thing is make sure watch your reviews. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Because if a negative review comes up, you need to get on top of that ASAP. Right. right. So you're starting your own multi-op. Yep. What were maybe some challenges that you're coming across that you didn't even think about oh wow a lot <laughs> uh the money uh -huh. uh, i expected it to be big but like, moving down to north carolina is a whole different ball game it's mm -hmm. a lot bigger city there's a lot more expensive bridal fairs are charging me three times as much as what they charge mm -hmm. me here so i got one next week going to do a bridal fair next week mm -hmm. which should be exciting uh-huh um, let me see challenges, pictures and videos. <laughs> uh -huh. Just look, I was trying to create my website and I, for the life of me was like, wow, I have no pictures I can use for this website. Mm -hmm. It was a struggle and a half to find pictures and I've taken a bunch of screenshots from videos, but that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, challenges, challenges. Uh, I expected a lot of them coming into it just because I was I've been prepping for this one mm -hmm. since August mm -hmm. and it just now got announced and launched and everything. Um, the amount of time probably that's one of those I did not expect it to take as much time as uh -huh. it has to get all my marketing material, all of my website, uh -huh. get everything built to the point where it's up and running now. Uh -huh. I did not expect it to take this long. Um, yeah, it's just kind of harder than you thought just and, uh, and it's more expensive just a lot there's a lot of work uh -huh. a lot of work yeah oh yeah i'm i'm so far negative right now 
Well, no, I, I think... There's a lot of money you got to put up front. Yeah, yeah, totally. Especially, it's a whole brand new area, brand new business. I, I, I don't even know the area yet, really. Uh-huh. So, I know the... I, I've reached out to a couple guys that are down there, a couple multi-ups that are uh-huh. down there, just to introduce myself, talk to them. I'll do more of that this week, but... Uh, yeah, it's just... It's a big undertaking to get mm-hmm. into a new area. It costs a lot of money up front to get right. all your marketing stuff uh-huh. put out there, the paid advertisements. Mm-hmm. Uh, this bridal fair, Jesus, bridal fairs are a thousand. I don't know how much bridal fairs are there. It's a thousand dollars for this one. Uh-huh. Um, I'm normally paying two hundred bucks here. Really, rural Ohio is two hundred bucks for a booth Dang. for a booth here, uh-huh. which is uh-huh. like a no brainer. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, I think there's a lot of stuff that when you when you want to move in that are kind of unexpected, um, and then when you have when you have multiple DJs working under you, you have to yes. then insure them, which then costs more, and that was the one thing that I came into that I didn't expect when I made the switch, is like it's, I don't want to say super expensive because I think it's kind of one of those costs that you need to just pay for so you just kind of let you know i mean it's insurance right yeah you should just it's not like advertisements where you can choose to do it or right not. You right liability insurance you right. have to have right and i think to insure two other djs it was a few hundred bucks for the year and i'm like dang like you know just wasn't expecting it at all so yeah. you know it, it's just kind of costs new costs you need more cables right you need more power cables. You need, I talk about black cables, right? Having the nice black cables instead of an orange extension cable running down the line at, you know, somebody's nice, elegant wedding. And, you know, you have to buy pretty much double what you already have. So it's a lot of stuff that you just have to like buy once, cry once, kind of. You know, you just have to like just go for it. Just buy it, do it, mm-hmm. and get it over with. Um, and it's it's rough when you first move into it. So, I think what's hard is no. I d- go ahead. No, go ahead. Do it. I think what's Finish hard. What? You're what? <laughs> Finish out what you're saying. I think what's hard is like knowing when it's time to switch to a multi op, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's like if you're asking yourself about it, it's not time, right? No. Um, there was a DJ in a in a Facebook group. And he said, hey, you know, I want to become a full-time DJ. I don't want to work a day job. He did like some marketing advertising agency. And he said, I don't want to do it. I just want to become a full-time club DJ. And it's like, number one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys couldn't see, but Ricky just like, like did like an ooh face, like ooh. Um, and he did that because, you know, you don't make a ton of money at the clubs. So you have to be really working it or be at the big, 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 big clubs to be making good money. And I, I know a couple. I know a couple I, that are yeah. full-time club DJs mm-hmm. that up in Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. I know a couple of them that have been able to do it. Right. They're at the big bars. They're right. doing the big stuff. Well, they're not making 200 bucks a That's night. One in like... <laughs> they're making a lot more. They're making he 700 is. a night. Yeah, he, and... yeah, they're... 200 bucks is... Yeah, that, right. Right. I don't even know that many that do that. Yeah. So it's... um, It's really... That's like two guys in like... 50 club DJs I know. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> so right. It's a very slim margin right. to get through. So so if he wants to do it, totally fine, right? Even if you want to just become a wedding DJ and do it. But if you're he he said when do you know it's time to make the switch? When do you know it's time to go full time? And I'm like if you have to ask it, it's not time. <laughs> right when you get so much work you know when it's time like okay i need to switch i'm i'm turning down so much work that it's time i need to go full time in this right um my day job is taking up so much of my time that i have to turn down weekend work because i am 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 either suffering um like Mm -hmm. your health is suffering you're suffering in your performances or you're turning down work because you're so busy during the week that you can't prep for these events which means then you know so that you have to when it's time you know it's time because you're turning down so much work so kind of on the multi-op when do you know it's time to switch and start bringing on more people to work under you and represent you and your business when you're turning down more 
business than what you could. Uh huh. You're you're not gonna want to hire on someone if you're only turning down like five gigs a year. If you're turning down anywhere from I would say ten to twenty a year, that's that is probably the time you want to hire on mm-hmm. somewhere else. Because if you're hiring on someone else, they don't want five gigs out of the year. Mm-hmm. They want at least probably ten. I would say if you got hired into a multi op and the multi op's like I can get you ten gigs this year for sure. I would mm-hmm. say most DJs would take that to join the multi op, especially if they're lenient, like I'm probably going to be, and be like, mm-hmm. you can still do your stuff on your own. Uh-huh. Just I'm going to provide you with extra work, mm-hmm. and that's just the environment I'm going to be in down there. It's it, there's like three big cities right there, so there's there's endless work to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm not too concerned that they're going to take all my business behind right. my back. Although there will be stipulations in the contract. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Besides the point. I know we're on a different topic now, but you brought back the, I've, I completely thought about the one headache that's been killing me right now starting this multi-op. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a permanent address down there yet. Okay. So I can't do crap in terms of legality and stuff. I can't get my insurance set up. I can't get set right. up as an actual biz- business yet, but I can book clients. Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to be booking weddings that are in like June or July. And uh-huh. I will be down there in May. So I'll have my permit and I'll get all that set up by then. But mm-hmm. that's the biggest headache in the so, world right now. I yeah. can't get like my Google business set up. It's ah. So you're almost like on hold for a little bit. You can book these events, yeah. but like you're like, just, you know, I'm almost there. Yeah. Yeah. My whole, my whole business is on hold though. Uh-huh. And that's going to be stipulated and expressed to the brides and grooms. Uh-huh. But yeah. Be clear. But anyways, back to where we're talking on that. So he was th- that dude was talking about when's the move to go full time as well. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing I'm going to be considering because I'm going to have a full time job, right? Along with a f- running or attempting to run mm-hmm. a multi op. And the biggest thing for me is going to be spending the extra money to have people that are going to run the business. Uh huh. Okay. I like it. And yeah. So, because I I have a full time job, forty hours a week. And I have to do that. Mm-hmm. So, and I know this coming from Chris because Chris, the owner of DJ Associates, he actually is just now retiring. Mm-hmm. He's been running DJ Associates for over 38 years Dang. with a full time job. Uh huh. And he's grown it to this massive thing that it is now. I don't know why he hasn't quit yet, but he, uh-huh. he just now is getting to the point where he can get his retirement and leave. Uh huh. So that's something but he's expressed to me multiple times spend the extra money if you're going to do a full-time job spend the extra money make sure you have booking agents accounting mm-hmm. there's people that are hang- basically handling all your back end right. stuff hire the assistants make sure that you're not um suffering make sure that your clients aren't suffering set, because you're busy doing something else set yourself up for success uh-huh set yourself up for success yeah even if it means that you might go break even as a business standpoint for mm-hmm. a couple of years make sure you just have it all established and everything right before you make the move and then once that's all kicked off and you the biggest thing for me when you were talking about the move to go full time mm-hmm. is if you can justify it financially mm-hmm. that's my that's just where i come from i'm a very financial person mm-hmm. so if you can justify it financially that it's liable for you to do mm-hmm. You're not going to be suffering. You're not going right. to be drowning in debt. It's right. the, it's the move to go for if you mm-hmm. can break even, basically, for the first couple of years. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think you you kind of just brought it up the debt, the whole debt idea as a DJ. I think uh, altogether, I don't think debt is bad if you use it properly, right? Yeah. Because if you buy two sticks of trust in a totem, right, two totems. That'll run you what seven fifty eight hundred bucks ish, give or take a little bit. That's less than a thousand dollars. I don't know who your dealer is, but really, <laughs> two, two six yeah. and a half. Yeah, less than a thousand dollars. Less than around a thousand. We'll say a thousand. Give, um, give me a second. I was just talking to my dealer about this. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll just say a thousand bucks. And how much do you charge as an upcharge for that? You could do. Um, around 200, 250, 300, depending on you, depending on your, um, you know, like once you have pictures and you show it to a client, like, Hey, check it out. This is my, this is my upgraded package. This is really cool. You get this, you get this, you know, um, 
you get, you know, these trust totems that are up late. You can get these scrims if you want them, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, your, your sales ability with that, you can then sell that for, you know, 200, 250 bucks. I think, I think mine's a little bit more, but I have upgraded lighting that's included. So it's just like one big package. So you can make 250 bucks off of it. Well, in four events, you just made your money back. And in those four events, mm -hmm. after your four events, it's all profit. So yeah, you may go into debt for a thousand bucks to get this. And then you, yeah. on top of that, you're going to pay a little bit of interest, but I mean, you should have that paid off within a year. And then after that, everything that comes in. There's a lot of, yeah. One of the biggest things I do is I normally use PayPal right now mm -hmm. because PayPal credit gives you six months, 0% interest financing. Mm -hmm. So I can buy my brand new trussing or in this case, what I just did literally almost six months ago now it's mm -hmm. in March. I bought two VRX 918 subs for mm -hmm. three and a half grand. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And instead of having to pay three and a half grand right off the get go, which I did not have, uh -huh. um, I paid it off over six months, mm -hmm. which is a lot more convenient for me mm -hmm. long term wise. Right. Right. So, so yeah, I think debt in and of itself is not bad. I think it can go bad when you spend a bunch of money on stuff that doesn't matter, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's a DJ. He's uh, near me. He's starting out. He is going crazy on buying stuff, and I like him a lot. And I almost want to, like, help him out and be like, dude, like, you don't need that, you know? Spend money on speakers, on nicer speakers that you can, you know, use that will make your service better. Don't buy it on a new mixer on the uh, the S9 the he has two the nexus 2000s he has a nexus 900 the, the the new one um and then he has an sz and then he has like the all-in-one i like i am like dude that is way too much gear you need one setup it doesn't even have to be nice when you're starting out right just spend the money on nicer speakers spend the money on black cables spend the money on advertising get out there learn the industry don't worry about gear that doesn't matter and won't make you money right gear will not make you money right gear right. gear is just a necessity mm -hmm. and and it's also a not necessity it's a uh -huh. need and a want at the same time right if you got it you don't need it so you, you so just want it. a nice quality wireless microphone can make mm -hmm. you money yeah. You can go and sell that to a client. Hey, look, my microphone doesn't drop out, right? The mm -hmm. cheap ones that you can buy, they drop out all the time. And that is where wireless microphones get a bad name. But this one is actually just as good as wired. It's very reliable. It's one of the best. That's why I spend money on it. You know, so so in that way, then you can charge the client more. But you going into it and and like, yeah, I have this really nice mixer. Well, what's that gonna do to the client? They don't mm -hmm. they don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is something that that's where dead can go bad. So, yeah, you can buy these bigger subs, these super nice subs that will then allow you to do bigger school dances, which will then allow you to make more money and more profit. And school mm -hmm. dances, of course, have the repeat business. So then you oh, get yeah. the next school dance and the next one. And I mean, I think I have schools booking five dances a year. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it's it's great. <laughs> It yeah, depends. Yeah. I mean, every school's a little bit different. Some it's yeah. two dances and some it's five, six. So, yeah. but that kind of thing, that will make you money. But buying, uh, 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 like lights, I think can make you money if they're the right lights. Yeah. Uplighting, but, that can make you money, but, right? A gobo projector, that can make you money. But having this light that doesn't matter or a light that you can't sell, it doesn't. Like, like, okay, a black light, right? Most DJs would say black lights are pretty good at, at, at an ROI because you can use them at some events. But if you're a yeah. wedding DJ and you're trying to go into a wedding, <laughs> your black light There's doesn't no matter black. to them. They're not going to no. do it. But if you're I doing sold off all my black lights a uh -huh. while ago because uh -huh. they make pars now that have them. Uh -huh. Right. And I can use the par for more events. Right, right, right. So, so second part of this, buy versatile equipment. Yes. Right. Don't buy a piece of gear that you can only use for one small thing. Use it dual purpose. So I know you did a review on the InnoSpot Pros, mm -hmm. and I love mm -hmm. mine. Mine are I you know I love, I love them. But what's cool is you can actually change out the gobos in yes. there. Mm -hmm. So what that means 
is if your client for a wedding wants a gobo projector you yeah. can yeah you you just you buy gobo you switch it out in the InnoSpot pro and now that thing is being used for two purposes it's lighting it's the intelligent lighting it's the nice lighting and you're using it as gobo projector so then you don't even need a second gobo projector yeah. you don't need a separate so exact same thing it's dual purpose mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh I, when i was starting out i got one of those uh the black t um truss systems yeah. right I'm, it's I'm, like the super cheap yeah. the i beam yeah. mm -hmm. and it has two t-bars on it right mm -hmm. so what i would do i never i i think i used the whole truss system like once or twice but i used those t-bars as t-bars as lighting stands and used it for like every single event so I had them, I used it for that, and then I upsold it to a, a few clients as the big package. Mm -hmm. So buying the versatile equipment that you can use in many ways that mm -hmm. will not only make you use it in one, like a gobo projector, you can use that pretty much one way. You can't use it too many other ways. But if you buy an InnoSpot Pro, yeah, it's going to cost more, but you can use it multiple ways. So think about what you're buying before you actually buy it. Because yeah. maybe you should spend a few hundred bucks more and get something out of it that will allow you to make more money over a longer period of time. Yeah. Red and green laser. Uh-huh. Right. That can, it's, it's one purpose. Right. That's probably like a school dance, but uh -huh. yeah, versatile lights. And I mean, I get a lot of beginners on my YouTube channel and they always are like, what's a light to get and all that. And I, I always say, I, my personal opinion, get PARs. Yeah. PAR lights are the Wash most light. versatile Versatile kind of... light you can possibly do. Uh -huh. There are so many uses, endless uses. People mm -hmm. keep coming up with new ones every day. Right. It's amazing what you can do with bar lights. You can just do them for about anything. Uh -huh. I mean, I have a ton now. Yeah. But... So you can you can get a par light. You can shine it on the crowd. Do it like a wash. You can shine it on the ceiling. Have it come back down. You mm -hmm. can use it as up lighting. You can use it as a like scrim lighting if you have speaker scrims. Mm -hmm. You can use it as a facade up lighting. Mm -hmm. um, you, can... you can put. Mo you can put multiples on a piece of trussing up top and do some eye candy yep. chases with the them. Chases. Um, you uh, can get it and what I used to do, I don't think I do it anymore, but you can like get it and shine it on you so that like you can get yeah. some cool light going on. Um, you can, like you said with the UV, if you get a multiple colored mm -hmm. um, par light, so it's like RGB UV or mm -hmm. RGB uh, W, the white, you can use the or white the as amber. a strobe. You can use the amber as a better up light. You can use the UV as a black light and make people glow. There are so many different things. But if you just bought a, a plain light mm -hmm. or some kind of effect light or, like you said, a laser, it may not be the best outcome that it could be. Yeah, and that also goes into the play of, like, we now have PARs that are RGB. We have RGBA, RGBW, mm -hmm. and then we have the all six-in-one uh -huh. ones. And then you also got wireless DMA, so you got battery powered. Mm -hmm. And I think Brian S. Red on YouTube made mm -hmm. a great video about don't buy all the latest right. and greatest ones that have the six and the wireless. Have if you only need maybe two batteries. Have mm -hmm. have a variety in your toolkit of different options that you can use. Uh -huh. You don't really need to buy the most versatile light in mm -hmm. the possibility. You just need a few of the most versatile, a right. couple of less versatile ones. So so that was I'm just saying don't buy everything right. big and up well, and there. I, and I think that's how beginners start off is they see it and they're like, "Oh, I need that $400 light." It's like, "No, you don't. You don't need the $400." I, you don't, you don't. And actually, I just I just I don't know why I missed this light, the Chave Wash FX light. Uh-huh. This light is super old. It's just RGB. Uh-huh. But I literally just found it the other day on YouTube and I bought one off the get-go cuz it's only 150 mm -hmm. bucks now. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm able to wash out like literally a whole entire room with that one mm -hmm. light and i'm like this is a no-brainer yeah yeah <laughs> so and look at older fixtures that's another thing right you don't need the latest and greatest fixtures uh -huh. the latest and greatest speakers there are good stuff that came out a couple years ago uh -huh. still uh-huh yeah um so that video that he was talking about it's from brian s red i believe it's on uplighting and it talks yeah. about you know what do you need and I think he had a friend that said, hey, you know, I want this. I want to get 16 of these or 20 of these wireless battery powered um, RGB, AW, uh, UV, UV. Six all, uh, yeah, the six in one up lights. And he's like, that's not what you need. You need RGB. You get a couple of the nicer ones. You get maybe one or two battery powered 
and you're good to go mm -hmm. because then with that yeah. you can do anything but if you go in and you start buying this and this and this and this and this you're going to be crazy and dead and then mm -hmm. if you don't have the ability to then sell that to a client because this is the thing yeah battery powered uplights are super nice right you flick a button you set it down versus <laughs> cabling where you have to like put it in you have to cable it all the way down find the closest outlet make sure it's pushed back gaff tape it down make sure it looks nice it's easier just to flick a button and go but if you don't have the client that will pay for that mm -hmm. there's no sense in buying it right so you need to be in the upscale venues that the client will actually care about a wire going across the floor if you're doing weddings in a backyard they don't care right they don't even care about uplighting so no. you need to know your clients and it's kind of like back to that thing know your market right know your market it's back to that thing if you are wondering if you need to get a nicer fixture, you probably don't need it. Mm -hmm. You should know, hey, I have all these clients complaining about these wires. You know, the venue doesn't like these wires going across the floor. Maybe I need to upgrade, mm -hmm. right? But if you are just dealing with, you know, basic, basic, basic clients that are just like, you know, all DJs are the same. We don't care about this wire. We don't care about orange extension cords. Then you don't need to go out and spend, shoot, how... Mm -hmm what what's 400 500 times 20 it's a lot don't spend all this money on uplights that you can't then sell to the client and i think that's what a lot of djs do and i think that kind of goes into the gear thing about buying equipment that there isn't a market for right i have a good friend of mine um and he got an led dance floor now it's cool it is so okay. freaking cool. Oh, yeah. It is an LED dance floor. I think it's 25 by 25. It is unbelievable. Hard thing is like not many people really care about it. Not many people will actually spend. Right. Yeah. Like weddings. Eh, I mean, you know, they have to really want it. School dances. Uh, schools. Schools have money. I will never say schools don't have the money because schools have the money. It's do they want to spend the money on an LED yeah. dance floor? If you go in, you can persuade a school to book you, right? You just need some good examples and evidence and say, hey, look, this is how you need that. You need to spend money on something. You should spend it on mm -hmm. a good DJ because this will bring, you know, income coming in over and over and over for the next future years. But if you come and say, I have this cool LED dance floor, they're kind of like, okay, cool. How much is it? Oh, it's 2500 Oh, yeah. No, no. We'd rather not pay that much for an LED dance floor. We don't need a dance floor in general, you know? I don't think gonna come for an led dance floor <laughs> right 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 they're come for a good dj right that's what they care about so yeah it's cool and yeah he can brag to all the other djs that he has this led dance floor but i mean dude that stuff's expensive it's not cheap so that's kind of the other thing don't buy stuff that will not that that, that there's not a market for don't and, don't buy stuff like that. yeah right if there's not a market, don't buy it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good way to look at that is if you see competitors that have that, that option available mm -hmm. in your area, and are they selling it? Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I like to talk about is be friends with all of your competitors. Right. Right. Don't be enemy. Right. And then with that, even if they are selling it, will that will it be smart for you to get into that market? Look at photo booths. Exactly. Yes, oh. photo booths are selling. Yes, uh -huh. you can. Maybe it would be smart. Are you really going to make that much money off of it now? I mean, we we just hit 2018. The the money is not there. There are so many competitors out there doing photo booths that unless you have the good clients that will actually pay for it and that money is not an option, right? Like nice mm -hmm. huge corporate clients, they don't care. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. they just want to have a good party. You can upsell them a photo booth. They're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that sounds so much fun. How much is it? OK, cool. Yeah, let's go. Like, it's not a, a house party where they're like, oh, how much is it? Oh, yeah, we can't afford that. They're much more. Hey, yeah, that sounds fun. Let's get a photo booth. Add it on. So, yeah, make sure that there is this need for it, this want for it. Mm -hmm. People will actually pay for it. You can actually make the money off of it and that you can you can you can actually sell it to people yeah and then you also got renting too uh-huh you, you can rent it out. yeah right if you don't have a photo booth and you don't think you're gonna sell it you probably got a competitor you can rent off of uh-huh right or sell it to them but yeah 
we kind of hammered the the debt right. <laughs> thing. I feel like right, right. Well, I I just think it's super important because I think a lot of people jump in and they're like, yeah, yeah I need this gear, I need this sub, I need this thing, and it's like, get become good first. Yes, become a good DJ. Focus uh-huh. on honing your skills and become uh-huh. and determining what your knit is. I guess uh-huh. your style uh-huh. of DJing. Right. Develop that first. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Man, awesome. Well, it was great having you on here. I really appreciate you jumping on. Is there anything else that that you want to drop to people listening? Uh, go check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, Just so DJ Rick Webb. <laughs> so YouTube, DJ Rick Webb, Instagram, yeah. Ricky Weber sixty five, Snapchat, Ricky Weber sixty five. Uh, is everything Ricky Weber sixty five? No, Twitter's DJ Rick Webb. Okay, DJ Rick Webb on Twitter. I can't change it. Can't change your dang Snapchat. Uh huh. Right, right, right. Created, it, <laughs> and I've already, I already have like a thousand something followers on Snapchat. Uh-huh. So there's no point in me changing. I could change my Instagram, but uh-huh. people already know what all my videos are posted. Right, right, right. So go check them out on YouTube. Subscribe. Drop a <laughs> drop a thumbs up. Comment. Hey, help, me the, help me get the 10k here. We're at 9,200 something right now. <laughs> nine two, nine two. All right, we'll we'll help you get there. We'll help you get there. So awesome! It was. Thank you so much for jumping on. That was awesome. Um, yeah. Any yeah, any me. last tips? If you had one tip for a beginning DJ, what would you say? Don't worry about buying equipment. <laughs> don't worry about buying focus, equipment. Focus on what you're doing, and also, don't try. Oh God, I I could have endless tips right now. Yeah. My head's been running all morning with all these comments and stuff. People have been sending me uh-huh. stuff about equipment and stuff like that yeah. i got like eight video ideas right now but i, I gotta catch up on videos anyway uh-huh. um but now keep, keep them record spinning as i always say i like it I uh like keep it. grinding and yeah just focus on becoming a better dj that's the biggest thing don't worry about the equipment that's mm-hmm. i got caught up in that when i first started uh-huh. too I, I i did i did get caught up in that but don't worry about the equipment you your growth will go from this to this in a year, uh-huh. it, it happens. Everyone hits that plat, that big spike, and it's uh-huh. crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I had fun. Have fun. Enjoy it. I got I got so many more topics I want to talk about now. All right. So that was the podcast. Awesome, awesome stuff. He gave some awesome and amazing tips. We had some really good conversations. Make sure you listen to this a few times because this really, really can help you uh, grow your business and become a better. DJ altogether. One thing that uh, Rick did say uh, once we finished recording was about his new t-shirt line. It just launched and uh, he does have some YouTube videos about it. Basically, he's uh, selling t-shirts and um, when you pay for the t-shirts, there is a little bit of money that is made, but he's not going to take that money. He's actually going to turn that money back into a YouTube giveaway and do some cool giveaways and um, that kind of stuff. So go ahead, go check out that product line. There are a lot of videos on YouTube explaining it. So definitely go check that out. He is on YouTube, so make sure you follow him there. And I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, all that stuff, DJ TJ 916 and DJ TJ Training. And we are going to be back next week with another podcast. So make sure you subscribe uh, wherever you're listening to this. Make sure you subscribe so that you can stay updated um, with the podcast. Thank you for checking out the Peak Period Podcast.